This is Angie Ong. She's been to Torch Us before in 2009. Yes. She's been a member for some time. And she's come to tell us how she deals with her fibromyalgia and how she progresses. Thank you. Yeah. So here you are. Thanks, Sue. <laughs> Well, welcome all. This is the first meeting for the year. It's good to see familiar faces. Um, and it's, it is indeed 2009 when I first talk about how I crossed the line from being a health practitioner uh, to a patient. And I still remember when I came, first came to the meeting, I saw our dear lady there, <laughs> Kay, Kay Bren. Uh, she was a, she's a physiotherapist and she's a founding member of this group. And it was amazing because 17 years before that, I was attending her postnatal classes and she was always asking us to focus on our uh, pelvic floor muscles. I so, still you still do. <laughs> so, at least that will prevent our incontinence, but not sure about our fibromyalgia. So, anyway, it was lovely. And um, so, today, a bit about me is that I'm a mom, you know, postnatal classes, a mother of three boys, ranging from the ages of 16 to 26. And I worked in hospital, community pharmacies, and research in addiction, and in a corporate uh, in the pharmacy association. I also worked, so in total, really, I've been in the health or the sickness industry for more than 30 years. But since I crossed the line, I've decided that there must be another approach uh, to well-being, and that is more on the wellness side. So I think since 2009 until now, I think it's been wonderful in the sense that it has given me a lot of awareness about uh, health is our right. Uh, when we lose your health, you really lose your wealth because you've got no opportunities to earn income. And I think that resonates with all of us here. And we also sort of have a kind of a profile as to what makes us more at risk of having this condition, which is really a cluster of conditions and symptoms. And I actually think it's an overstressed superwoman who is a perfectionist and, you know, try to juggle life in the 21st century. And I think that's probably a snapshot of how we become like that. Not all of us, because sometimes it can be uh, sparked off by infections or some inflammatory conditions, but uh, for some of us, that could be our journey. So today, I thought, you know, we've had excellent speakers over time, and I've actually benefited from them. I always think that the main thing, if I'm going to spend time to come and listen, I should take something home with me. So I hope you get something home as well today. And because I'm a pharmacist and I, one of my job was actually a consulting pharmacist with National Prescribing Services where we talk to doctors about quality use of medicine and to support them in terms of kind of uh, rational use of medicine in a safe way. And you know, in the last 10 years, they've been talking about lifestyle, lifestyle changes. And if you look at any, I'm sure you agree with me, if you see a doctor, they always say, get your lifestyle changes, is that right? But most of us actually don't know where to begin or we think we are doing the right thing. What's wrong with my lifestyle? What's wrong with the way I eat and live? So obviously there must be a trick or a secret to do such things and hopefully I can uncover some of these secrets with you today. So um, what is mortality and what is morbidity? I suppose that's very important to understand that because that is how scientific papers are measured in terms of morbidity and mortality. So what is morbidity? It's an interactive session, by the way, so you'll be asked questions. Hey? Morbidity? Okay. Morbidity. Hey? Morbidity or mobility? Morbidity. Morbidity. Um, oh, the death, basically. Death is oh. mortality. mortality. You've answered my next mortality. question. Yeah. yeah. So morbidity is? Okay, you want to help us? Well, it's, it's where your quality of life has been influenced, where there's um, aspects of your life where you're feeling very disabled and you're not fully functional. Yes, so fibromyalgia in some way is more of a morbi morbidity issue, isn't it? We don't die from it like cancer or something or chronic diseases. So I think it is pertinent for me to point out the fact that we are not dead yet, so we really should behave like living. So we really should live our life because we actually don't have a life sentence on us. And um, so, when does a condition become chronic? So th this is the reason why I put this slide, is because questions helps you to think, okay, and feel. So what do you think, when do you think that transition changes from an acute to a chronic? Yeah, an acute, acute um, condition will pass and the chronic one is delivered. Yeah, so acute, you sh sorry, yeah? Longer than six months becomes chronic. 
In pain, we actually say six weeks. Some things, if you don't address it after six weeks, it can verge onto chronic. But if it goes on for more than six months, it's truly chronic. So I suppose in some ways, this is something useful for us. So like if you've got pain, injury, or infection, it's something we want to deal with it, yeah? Because they're like the poisons in our body. So what does the, will people die of fibromyalgia? No. no, okay. Maybe people will die of broken heart, but you won't die of fibromyalgia. Um, I want you to put on a nice big smile for me to loosen up those facial muscles. It's good for you. It's good for your soul. In fact, they say people who laugh actually lives longer because it stimulates these uh, good endorphins and serotonin and dopamine. So, what does disease mean to you? So it's form of two words, right? This and ease, right? This plus ease becomes disease. So when your body is out of its ease, it becomes diseased. So when does the body become out of ease? When it's in pain, yeah? Sickness, Sickness yeah? Stops you functioning. Stops you functioning. So disease is when your body, your body is actually beautifully made, okay? It's designed millennium years and it's, our condition is not new really, they've just found a name for it. So disease means your body is out of homeostasis. Now that's a big fancy word but basically our body has a biofeedback system. It tells you when you're producing too much thyroxine, it will shut that down, tells your pituitary gland to cut down that thyroxine stimulating hormone and less will be produced. You know, that's the same with your ovulation and so on. So our body actually has a very fragile or not fragile but sensitive biofeedback that enables us to function. We touch heat, our hand draws up because it tells our brain that, you know, um, that's hot, you know, that's uh, injury to yourself if you don't respond. So our body has to be at ease. And what does healthy mean to you? No disease. No disease, yeah. It also comes from two words. Any, anybody want to try? What does the word healthy comes from? Health? It has the word, yeah, go on, I want you to talk. Heal, yeah, it has the word heal inside, great. And? Another word in it, is it? Die. Die, and what does die mean? Self, right. So, now you understand disease and you understand heal thyself. So, that is your power, right? You are in the driver's seat and that is your power. You can be healthy, but who makes you healthy? The doctor? The drugs? No, you yourself can be yourself healthy. So that sort of starts the way to my uh, introduction, which is basically you have to tend to your garden of life, it's within, and it, you are the gardener. So, um, how many of you like gardening? Yeah. So you understand the process of gardening, you've got to put, provide nice, good, aerated soil. If you can get some earthworms, it's good, some manure, some you know, things inside, fiber, I call it, we call it fiber in food, but we call it like, you know, things, uh, compost. So likewise, we have to nurture this garden and it needs sunlight. If you want your roses to grow well, it needs sun, sunshine, not in the shade. So I think I would like you to think about that. How do you tend to your garden of life as I, as I sort of uh, talk you through? So this is about me, myself and I, and, and, um, it will help you to think why me, myself and I are very important because they are words that actually helps you to focus on yourself, all right? So, um, well, this is a new year, so we all have new year hopes, don't we? We have new year dreams, we have new year intentions, um, and that at this time we also reflect on what has been. So now this is a, a statistics, Generation Alpha born after 2010 are exposed to more than 80 minutes of screen time every day and these are the new preschoolers. Just like when I talk to university students, I say what were you doing when the clock struck strike midnight in millennium year 2000? Most of them will be playing some sort of computer games by that age, you know. So I think we are actually entering into a new phase, okay? So the millennium is upon us and there's a different way of doing things, yeah? So we are now in cashless society, there's virtual vacations, you don't have to leave home. You can hear, smell, feel the temperature, humidity and so on. And this is coming, yeah? So what have I shown here is, I just came back from a holiday. 
I climbed Mount Kosciuszko and I skied for four days. Now I didn't think I could do that. And I just want to sort of share the excitement to be able to feel your body again. And it's not magic. <laughs> okay, so since 2009 when I, I actually my talk was about nutritional health. And now, so that's about six years, I've actually spent a lot of time to understand how our body functions with, with the blessings of nature around us. So Coffee Conversations is very bit thin, thanks to Gina, all this plop. I always get these reminders, there's a club meeting in Geraldton and Albany and Mandurah. Edie, does it help? Yes, yes, that's right, but you started, the, you and your team started. Yeah. So I think Coffee Conversations are important because it makes you feel good, yeah? So what is the sick body? And I thought I'll use this, the Psalmist, which is a very ancient book. It illustrates the agony of the physical mind and the spiritual because my concept of healing is mind, body and spirit or soul, yeah? So I thought I'll read this for you unless there's a volunteer who wants to read for me. Maybe Sue will read for me. <laughs> Just give a break to the voice. Okay, the sick body, Father Mahalja. The psalmist illustrates the agony of the physical, mind, and the spiritual. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, and am not silent. But I am a worm, and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me, they hurl insults, shaking their heads. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is turned to wax, it has melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a pot shed, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. I lay in the dust of death. This excerpt from Psalm 22. Thanks, Sue. How many of you have felt some of these emotions during your journey? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen a few nods, and we all do, right? So I thought it's really good when it's put into a poem or in a psalm because we can relate to that. And it's hard, yeah? it's painful, it's miserable. And we get all these uh, feelings of unworthiness, of death, of horrible. And it's, I think it's a feeling that we have to acknowledge because then we go, I don't have to be in that place. What am I going to do to get out of here? Yeah? So, you all recognize this card? <laughs> Thanks to Gina, we got this last Christmas. She was very generous to share her handicraft. And I thought, well, you know, we cannot, we are an old age body. How can we have a newborn baby mindset, okay? So I'm going to say welcome to this world, little one, because you are what you think. You are what you eat. So in many ways, you can actually change the way you think and you can actually feel better like a newborn babe. And that's possible because the power of the mind is so powerful. I really like that. Or you can spit the dummy. <laughs> that's okay. You know, we all make choices in life. You can choose either way. So homeostasis, like I mentioned, it has to, it, they are the keys to living longer with quality of life. And you know, the body is an amazing body. The brain is very powerful. A lot of uh, decisions are made in that time and the food. So these things fit into our well-being. So why me? Remember I said me, myself and I? This is about you. 2015 is your year. Yeah? You are going to do what? You are going to do what? Me things. Yeah? Me things. So give me an example. What are the me things you can do? You can volunteer and read the first line, second line, third line. Go on. Meditation. Meditation. Yep. It begins with? Me. Another one? Melody. Melody. What does melody do? Music. It does do, doesn't it? It brings good feelings to you. I played a song just now by Paloma Mar Faith about love hurts. And I was talking to this lady and she was just thinking of leaving her husband. <coughs> and we were having lunch and this music played and it was like, oh, she just could embrace that song and just feel that moment. And and she acknowledged, actually love hurts, but I really love him. I'm, I'm going back to him, you know? Sometimes we just want to run away from the situation. But in this situation, when you realize you share some happy melodies and memories, you go, hmm, it was all worth it. So, meals. Good food. Good food. The right food. 
the right food. You're feeding your body, right? Sometimes we, the food goes down from our mouth to our anus and we just do not realize it's doing a very important job, digesting and absorbing, you know, providing nutrients to our body. Chew well. Sorry? Chew well. Chew well is one of them, yes. It starts from that, doesn't it? Yes. The next one, the fourth one, the fourth me is? So what does Belonging, yes. So you belong, you're here because you belong and you want to find out how you can help yourself. And, you know, you smile with each other, you feel belong, you know, you connect. Just talked to Sue in the car park, she just had an amazing holiday up in uh, Iceland, isn't it? Seeing the northern lights. And I said, well, I'm in Sapporo, I'll be thinking of you. <laughs> we'll be quite close together. And the next one is? Movement. Movement, yeah. So there's a me in there as well. So look, if you think yeah, these things will help you and you want to write somewhere, do so because these are the things that I use to reflect and I help my clients to help them to think through, you know. Things that you can think through helps you to focus within yourself and helps you to be in the present, yeah, and be grateful. So, I am what? I am a product of a few rings, right? We have one on our hand which is called the Suffer Ring. <laughs> Who, who got that joke? <laughs> okay. Can you repeat the word, please? Oh, I, I, oh, I said we, there are lots of rings that mix up to who oh, I am. Yeah. And we wear one ring, and that is called the? Suffering. Suffering. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm glad I'm picking it up, but you know, it's just in jest, of course. Yes. Um, so we are a product of our condition, our belief system, our thoughts, our emotion, and our behavior. So let's begin with condition. This is the product of our experiences and development. Yeah? Now we are talking about the mind. Yeah? So you go, oh, even before the person opens the mouth, you go, yeah, they'll, they'll say some nasty thing about me. And you react in anticipation. Yeah? That's the conditioning. Belief system. It's subconscious how you perceive the world and yourself, includes the expectation of self, others, and society. And the belief system is very important because it really colors or discolors the way you interact with people. And it's something that we do not pay enough attention to it, but we really have to nurture this garden in our heart in this area. Our thoughts, they're conscious, but they're untamed, okay? They can go all over the place. And I think one of the good things for mental fibromyalgia is we have to calm our brain, our mind, and let it settle and come, come back to the right alignment. That's really helpful. Uh, our emotion is the energy that powers our behavior. And behavior can be constructive or destructive. Okay, so all this actually is like a stone. You throw into the middle of a compound and it makes concentric circles. And all that sort of creates the ripples and mix up how you feel. <clears throat> so food as a drug, who agrees with me? Can food be a drug? Yes. Yes? yes. It's like exercise can be a drug. Yes. When you talk of exercise, it's the drug of choice for fibromyalgia, so as is food. Yes, that's right. Well, food gives you us nutrition, right? Uh, it has macronutrients, so carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. Now, they are the basic. We cannot do without, okay? I know there are always conversations about which carb, which protein, which fat. I think it's important to understand that they are all the basic ingredients for our, for our body. Hormonal response, because they actually affect our body system, okay? And it sends messages through there. I'm very big on gut health, because I have realized that we pay too little attention to gut health and a lot of the issues in terms of allergies, in terms of um, wellness, um, does relate to our gut. And there are more and more research in terms of why our gut health is so important. And Australia has a high uh, percentage of colon cancer and I think it, it does begin with what we put in our mouth, okay? So mindfully eating and choosing the right food is important. So food is energy, okay? It gives you energy. It's information. Information is because it actually tells the body what it is. And nutrients to make up your cellular wellness. Processed food is taking away natural goodness. And that's why we have to take supplements. 
unfortunately, you know, it shouldn't be that way, but it's just because the way life has become. Uh, I think if any of you had a chance to watch Food Dot Inc, that was, I mean, I watched it and I was just blown away with the way how food, which was a solution to, to, to feed the overpopulated world, is actually so, not so good, yeah? And commercial foods is business and they make money. Not, uh, unlike those early days where you go to the shops and you buy food, they, they're made with love and they do it just to provide a service and make some money. Now it's all about making money, you know, big golden arches makes money everywhere. So you cannot give, you, can, you pay a CEO millions of dollars, you cannot pay, your, <laughs> you cannot make quality food if you got the gist, yeah? Because you've got to hire such a big organization. So I actually uh, encourage people who have allergies to look at elimination diet to improve food allergies and intolerances. And there is a, a system how to do that. So food is information because food, uh, proteins act as antigen, it stimulates the immune response, there's gluten in wheat, oats and barley. These are the main culprits when it comes to elimination diet. Casein and lactose in dairy products, peanuts, eggs, soya and soy products, okay? So um, I did a course with the Integrative Nutrition in New York and we were actually educated by really gurus and top people who are in this business of nutrition. We have more than 100 dietary theories, some of which are trends and some of which are well researched and proven. So it shows that you know, food is actually not only big business but it's a very confusing business because we just don't know what to eat. And the more people tell you, you just get so confused that you just freak out, you know, what do I eat? And I think that's really tough because food is meant to be pleasurable and it's meant to bring people together and you enjoy each other. So when your food enters from the mouth and before you do so, you have to think how it will benefit you, okay? So in our um, gut system, you've got enzymes, you've got acid, you've got zillions of good bacteria as well as bad bacteria if you eat bad food. Pre and probiotics actually supports your good gut health, immune system to defend the body against toxins. So let's say you eat some bad food, you go, oh dear, what's happening? It actually stimulates the immune system and all these macrophages comes out and go, oh, I don't like you, and they swallow them, digest them and get rid of them. So when you have a strong gut health and strong immune system, that actually takes care of yourself, okay? But if you don't, then it's a different story. You probably have heard about leaky gut. Yeah? So that's the style. It's like, if you think about a net that is so loose, you know, things are just, you're not going to catch too many fish if you've got a leaky gut, a net. So it's sort of similar philosophy. All right, so this is our beautiful gut. Right? It's uh, the, the size of the intestine, the surface area is the size of a tennis court. So it's really, you know, designed to absorb as much goodness into your body as possible. Mm. And um, you have the liver, which is the biggest <coughs> detox organ. So if you drink too much, you take too much medication, you probably got a liver which is not totally functional. And you do, you know, blood tests, like liver function tests to find out how well your liver is. And then if liver function is a problem. Sorry? You will be half dead if your liver function shows there is a problem. Yeah, that's right. So really, it's like if you've got cirrhosis or hepatitis, it shows elevated, elevated enzymes. But you really want to know that this is not, you don't wait till a red result come to do something about it. You know, these are a bit like trends. You look at the picture. Okay, so those are the body systems. These are all the various body systems that supports you. I think I better move along. How are we for time? I didn't see the clock. Where was the clock? Okay, so that's the role of nutrition, role of exercise. Like you say, why are exercises so important? You've got movement, but is the is cardiovascular? It's uh, resistance and it's uh, stretches. They are all very important because they supply oxygen to the cells and friendships and sleep and sunshine. Now sleep, I can't tell you how much sleep is, how important sleep is. Because my sleep is so much better, I'm more functioning during the day, my muscles ache less. So those of you who are still struggling with sleep issues, it's probably the first thing you've got to deal with. How can you sleep better, okay? Because that is really the key to a well-functioning body. So I want to tell you about vitamin D, but you know, I think that's too much emphasis on that. All you need is basically, uh, uh, what do you call it, 30, 15 minutes to 30 minutes if you're darker skin uh, in the sun with 15% uh, of your body exposed to the sun should give you a minimum requirement of 1,000 units, yeah? So, the sun has to be at the right, at the right angle, otherwise you don't get it. <coughs> 
Because I think there's been a big concern about the different kind of testing that's been done and also how accurate. So I've got an article there if you want to have a read. It sort of talks a bit more about the pros and cons. I think we know that it's good to have the right level. So what do you do if you don't have the right level? It's try to do it through lifestyle and if not just take a short course of supplements and then it might write you up again. So start transforming your life. This is a program I, I run in a one-to-one -one or group coaching. It's a mind fitness body and it's about giving you tools to help yourself. And uh, underlying features of chronic diseases, toxicity, inflammation and oxidative stress. So we're really talking about a cellular level, what's happening to your, your body. So with integrative me medicine, it deals with the mind, body and soul. It treats the whole person and the disease will ease. Yeah. So what is this silent uh, killer? You probably have heard about chronic inflammation, yeah, in some sort of way, oxidative stress radicals. So the links between inflammation, heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's and other disease is becoming really popular in the last 10 years. Okay? And I think as more and more research go into phytonutrients, and look, the healing is in the nature. Okay? The multicolors of nature, they are rich in antioxidants. So eat a variety of colors and also make sure you incorporate some oil because it actually helps increase the absorption of the phytonutrients into your gut. So a drizzle of EVOO and EVOO is so cheap here. Extra virgin olive oil is really cheap. And I was doing uh, an our research and I've heard about this a while ago was thinking about 50 mils of olive oil every day. It's really good for your gut, you know. Fat, don't make you put on fat as you know, controversial, controversial to what we think. Actually, what puts, makes you put on fat is low glycemic carbohydrates. That means something you eat and you make you feel hungry very, very quickly, it shows that that is probably not good for so you. It's like 15 or 50 mils of a Five zero. Five zero. Mm. Okay, so what you, what you eat, you behave how you feed your mind. So how would you act today for a better tomorrow? Now, because my topic is about waistline, so do you, anybody knows what the waistline we're talking about here? You know how I said the topic today is find your waist and gain in health? So anybody knows what is that magic numbers? Body mass index is actually your height and your weight. And somehow, if you are very muscular, that can give you slightly higher BMI, which is fine, because muscles actually dictate uh, metabolism. So you actually well lean body, actually your basic motor, metabolic rate goes up. But fat actually in your body slows down your metabolism. So it's sort of, uh, you know, double whammy. So, um, so the waistline we are look at, the National Heart Foundation actually recommends for men is less than 94 centimeters. So go home and measure your husband's up. 94, 96 is fine, you know, because it's like, and 80 for women, less than 80 for women. What is it yeah. for women? Sorry? Less than 80 for women. Yeah. But of course, we talk about pear shape and apple shape, yeah? So, which one is more at risk? Which one is more at risk, the apple or the pear? Yeah, because that's the belly fat, right? They used to work out waist-hip ratio, but now they think that's not as big a deal as just doing the waist. The other thing is just wear a belt. And you know, that gives you a few ideas about the notches. So I've dropped a notch or two, which is good. I'm wearing the clothes that I couldn't wear <laughs> for a while. So that was a coffee break, yeah? For you to think, breathe. So do you know how to breathe? Do you know how to breathe? In three nights, at three nights. <laughs> Breathing is actually an art in some ways because because it controls how we, our heart rate as well. So breathing in, hold, and breathe out. And when you breathe out, drop your shoulders. And it's like there's a balloon underneath your lungs, just above your diaphragm, and you're blowing into that balloon. So you breathe in, hold, and then breathe out like you're squeezing out air from the balloon. And if you want to, go with a big sound, shh, it really helps to empty it. Like the balloon goes shh. So, hey? That's good to do with the red traffic lights. Yes, just like your pelvic floor muscles before. <laughs> now it's breathing, dropping your shoulders and all that. Okay. So, the state of the nation, what is the result of this cure all? It's not much. Many dieters lose weight initially only to see the kilos come back. And it's a billion dollar business, okay, because when you lose muscle, 
a lot of it you could be losing muscle. So if you are skinny fat, it means you have a lot of fat but you don't have enough muscles and it's the muscles which increases your metabolic rate, your metabolism. So they, they also products that never deliver on their promises, been overweight, it's like a bullseye. Everybody's trying to target you to make money out of you. And it's a really depressing situation, isn't it? You know, it's like, oh, I don't feel good about myself and oh, every, all these advertisements are telling me that this and that. I think it really plays on the mind. Instead of riding the diet roller coaster with its ups and downs, twists and turns and disappointments, be, I'm actually teaching, or you know, the program that I'm running with a few friends is actually how to do, how to eat for life. So it's actually uh, a coaching session. It's a coaching program. So diet, soft drinks. This is basically showing you the kind of industry that's out in the market. Okay, even low calorie foods and so on. So why learning how to eat is important is about it's about lifestyle. So it's not a diet, it's not a temporary solution, it's actually lifelong habits to support long-term weight loss and maintenance. Because yo-yo diets are really bad for us, you know, it does play havoc in our body. So mortality and BMI, so you can see people in this range, less than 19 have a high risk ratio, so thin is not necessarily a good thing, and too heavy is not too good. So between 25, actually 30 is really on the obese side, but you know, depending on your nationality and your shape and your frame, you guys can be small, medium, large frame. So usually between here and there is pretty good, okay? And um, so silent inflammation is what is causing these uh, chronic diseases to come up. And that's why when we grow older, it's like a car, you know? You don't have a problem with a car when it's new, but over time it starts having this and that. So a case in point was my son turned 18 and my uh, a cousin gave a car and he says, don't spend any more money on this car. I haven't done anything to this car for the last six years. Just drive until it dies. And my husband thought, oh, it looks good. The body really looks good. So we sent it to repair $2,000 for this. Six months later, and one and a half thousand for this. And now $500 for this and so on. Until the last bill was like one and a half thousand. We said, no, this is a bad body. No matter how much money you put into it, you're not going to solve it. Yeah. So in some ways, it's like, we have to realize the good thing about our body is self-generating. It's not like a car. So it can, it can produce good stuff. So rethinking our obesity as an adipose uh, tumor. So how to support your body is really go for variety, go for whole, go for real foods, drink filtered water. Are you a stress eater? So there's an imbalance of the hormones, okay? The leptin and the ghrelin. The ghrelin is the one that makes you feel hungry. So remember, grrr, you know, ghrelin makes you hungry, and leptin gives you the fullness. And they actually have found that there is resistance in some of these uh, people that they, the body doesn't read it as such. So are you addicted to carbs? Love your bread, rice, or pasta? How to reset your metabolism? Struggling with belly fat? So fat busters increase fat burn and prevent formation of fat cells. And if you Google search fat busters food. Google, there's lots and lots, yeah? Basically nuts, protein, spices, um, I've got a list of them here, berries, citrus fruits, uh, salmon, cinnamon, sweet potatoes, uh, chili, mustard, ginger, garlic, turmeric. Hey? Could you slow down, please? Uh, that's a lot. I, I mean, this, this is... is to get slower. Oh, okay. No, that's fine. <laughs> there's so many, really, but I just thought I'd give you a sample of some, right? So, um, okay, uh, berries, citrus fruits, Soybeans, chickpeas, lentils, salmon, avocado, nuts, ground flaxseed, cinnamon, sweet potatoes, oats, whole grain cereal. That's if you don't have allergies to this. Chili, cane, pepper, chilies, curries is good, ginger, garlic, turmeric. Yeah? It's just spices, basically. It's, and I want you all to think there's no magic food. Superfoods are actually everywhere. And each community have their own superfoods. Inca berries in the Incas, the Chinese have their own, the Indians have their own, and I think that's fair, right? You cannot hog everybody's superfoods and go, oh, I deserve superfoods and you don't, you know? So I think it's a thing. So a health coach actually helps you to work through life challenges, issues, uh, clinically proven, low glycemic weight management system, and really very simple thing, tips like, who have introduced quinoa in their diets? Yeah? Buckwheat? Yeah? yeah? So just throw them and cook in the rice, cook with your rice, rice cooker, it cooks like rice, okay? And then cook a bit more, hey? It depends which rice too. 
Uh, most uh, no, not brown rice because brown rice you need one to one and a half cups of water and you need to soak. Yeah, I think we yeah okay. Basmati is good because it's also low GI, medium GI. So basically, you do cook that and then you fluff it up and then you can give some to make your lunch salad. And then you know, cook once, use twice, so that you can spend more time uh, balancing your time. So the quest to lose weight is never ending one because uh, there's always miracle cures calling out at you. So the latest is paleo diet. Yeah. So what's your health goal for 2015? Your why? Your story? Um, 29. Oh, okay. So this is how much we spend on the hospitals, healthcare systems. This is just a snapshot, you don't have to know exactly, but just to know how we can actually frame our life uh, in all these things like the me, myself and I, the breathing, the stretching the muscles, knowing that stress is not good for you and stretch, stretches and exercises actually reduces your stress and healthy comes from the healing of the mind, body and soul and then smart life with lots of smart apps really, lots of things are now available on the computer and um, you know, search for superfoods, left food be your medicine, medicine be your food and Hippocrates is the father of medicine. So it's, you know, it's uh, ancient tip, eat fish and chicken twice a week, red meats once a week or a few times a month, lots of lentils, uh, these are some of the foods that we were talking about, yeah? So these are the kind of superfoods. So when you lose weight, where does it go? There's actually a chemical process, it's breathe out and water, you sweat and you breathe, that's how you lose weight. Yeah, it's just how much more. So if you exercise, you lose more of both. So that's where your weight converts to. So this is just an article uh, about, I thought this is quite fun. The big question now is how long does it take us to exhale the muffin we had for morning tea? <laughs> so the study calculated that over the course of 24 hours, a person exhales 200 grams of carbon from their bodies from doing just the basic sitting, sleeping and light activities. And a 100 gram muffin will get exhaled in about five hours. But if you go for a jog, it's in an hour. Yeah? So it's good, isn't it? Now you think twice about the muffin. Maybe a smaller <laughs> one or share with some friends. So these are not one size fits all. There are all the different types of uh, diets. And uh, you, have to find, uh, you have to find what is your bio-individual diet. Okay, your heart. These are all the homeostatic parameters that we use to measure health. So know your vital statistics, your heart, your stroke risk score. This is all done. A lot of health practitioners actually do that now. Uh, type 2 diabetes can be reversed, fibromyalgia can improve, all right? The more we move, the more we improve. improve. Excellent, okay. So what is your dream? Yes. That's it. I think that's reasonable, isn't it? It's not too much to ask. So um, this is my qualification and that's it. Yeah. Any questions? Where's my watch? Quarter two, just nice? Yes. Oh, the timer just went. Oh, isn't that perfect timing? Anybody got any questions? Excuse me. Uh, what about the eat right for your blood type diet? Yeah. Apparently it's very important to eat according to your blood type. Uh, I, think, I think there's always people advocating different things. Uh, I, I also did that as a part of my unit in terms of that. And um, I am biggest supporter on the silent inflammation Mediterranean diet because that's where a lot of research has supported that. So, but some of them actually parallels, you know, there's some, and you know, if you find that it helps you, that's good. That's why we sort of say not one size fits all. But in the long term, you want to go for a low inflammation diet with superfoods because that's pre pre preventing chronic diseases, yeah? How do you yes, deal with cortisol and leptin and ghrelin in the diet? Yeah. Cortisol, leptin and? Ghrelin. Ghrelin, yeah. They are caused by stress as well. And they also uh, low glycemic index and low glycemic load actually moderates the amount of sugar that's released. So through insulin, you know, and uh, glucagon, which are the other hormones in your body. So there's some sort of regulation. But ghrelin and, and uh, leptin are quite newish hormones that is found mainly in the brain that affects our appetite. Yeah. How do you regulate it? Uh, it's, uh, there is a way to do it you know, because it's really tuning into your body. And uh, so uh, a systematic approach is journaling. So we are very big on journaling. We actually get people to reflect on what they eat so we can actually see patterns. Thank you. That's good.
So do you do a elimination type? For people who have allergy issues uh, or who just wants to have a clean, cleaner diet, it doesn't hurt because, you know, uh, basically you find that your skin becomes clearer. I mean, I used to have cholesterol. I took a picture and I thought, oh gee, aging is terrible. I look terrible. You know, it's like rust all over my face. And I find that over time, it does get better. Mm -hmm. I actually have a picture here of a lady who had a really bad psoriasis. I'm not sure whether you can see it. And you know, through diet and lifestyle and some uh, things, it can, you know, it does reverse uh, the immune response. She had this for 50 years. So it, I think sometimes we want to give a bit of hope. You know, we're not going to say we can cure everybody. But I think is that your body can actually reset itself. You just like a good garden, tend to the garden of your life, give it good support and nutrition, fertilize it well, it will be good. That's okay. Teach, taking you home, is it? <laughs> Any more questions? That's okay. I think there was one. Oh, yeah. Well, you just sort of said you have to find the diet for, you know, like the grass or the blood or whatever. Um, and I think you might have answered it. How do you do that? Is that through journaling? The blood diet, the blood type diet is, uh, I know some practitioners do it. Uh, I also do it, but that's not my emphasis because, but you know, sometimes you're guided by people in the sense that if that's what they want to do, it can be done. Just like there's Ayurvedic diet, there is zone diet, there's Onish program, it's like hundreds, like I told you, we're exposed to more than 100 theories. And I still feel that the Mediterranean diet as well as a vegetable-based diet for people who have uh, high is other issues with meat and so on. And sometimes you might do it for a season and you find out, oh, this actually works better for me. You have to be tuned into your body. Yeah. Then you can listen better. And journaling actually helps you to tune in. Yeah, I just think keeping a diary. Yeah. Yes. Keeping a diary. And just, as you said, and it, just being aware of your body is probably the most important thing. Yes. That's what I've found. Because I've got yes. a list of foods now that I find it intolerant to because I've got mild. IBS. Yes. And um, as long as I avoid them, I'm fine. Yes. And I think that's what it is. I don't think we are meant to eat everything. Uh, I used to have this really bloaty tummy, and I, my husband used to tease me, yeah, forever three months pregnant. And I go, oh, yeah, I just don't know what's wrong. <laughs> hey? Yeah. Well, you know, what do you do? That's why I say suffering. No. <laughs> Erase that. But. We actually give a, uh, we actually have a program and actually at the back is the journaling and it goes through your daily, your daily stress reduction journaling and it also has affirmations. So it like says, oh, I, you know, I've got to think right, I've got to, you know, how to do this and that. So it's like my body is getting stronger, slimmer and healthier every day because of the positive choices I've made. So you have daily affirmations and they're important because sometimes you lose the big plot, oh, I love my healthy body. Yeah, and so the affirmations by choosing health, I now have a lot of energy. So they've got affirmations in the journaling and they show you what you eat, what you don't eat. And in the front, we actually teach um, more about the journaling, but also what you're looking for, like for strength in your body, you got to do push-ups, some push-ups, this and that. So there's a lot of ways if you want to know how to look after your body and what you're looking for and aiming for. There. It's, it's, that's the secret, you know. It's, it's no secret because it's actually achievable by everybody. It's time? How long is the course? Oh, I run a 12 uh, session program. So at the moment I'm partnering with this lady who is a naturopath in Canningvale. So she is actually a pain management person. She does brain gym and so on. I think she might even have come here before. She has. Yes, Jean, right? Yeah, Jean, yeah. She was here not too long ago. Yeah, okay. Right, yeah. So um, I'll let her know that you remembered her. <laughs> so, you know, we've, uh, we're going to run some programs from her, her, her practice. She's lent me a room, so that's in Canningville. Uh, or else if you've got a group of people who wants to do it out of your house and all that, it's not really a problem because I bring tools with me. So I actually, um, you know, some of the, these are my survival kit and I'll just show you, you know, a ball. Just, you know, practice squeeze ball, de-stress, you know, kick, bum around, throw around to each other. It's really good because you're moving your upper body. And one of the things they found that um, to reduce your belly fat is doing upper body. So when you go for exercise, you do your swings, you know, you do your things and do all that, you know. One exercise which is very good is the figure of eight, you know, that you can do. And it's like, you're not hitting anybody, but it's like good for you as you walk. 
Uh, uphill, downhill is good because you use different muscles. One will go for the heart, the other one go for diabetes. And now I've got this brush, which is a loofah brush. It's like a light, light brush. It sort of stimulates your nerve and your immune system. And uh, the stretches, these are always good because, you know, stretches is actually helps the body to relax. You know, so, uh, you know, things that you can do at home when you watch TV. Yeah. That's why my emphasis is actually DIY. Very much DIY. You don't spend too much time running to the gym. You just want to be able to do things at home, you know. And so many applications are available. And it's like, diff not difficult, but just doing all this, it's just that the body thanks you for it. Because you're moving and you're giving some resistance. You know, and yeah. So these are my other kids, my earplugs. They are wonderful. Yeah. And my eye. And I sleep because, yeah, and it's like, yes, I, I used it. So it's like, these are your survival kit. You don't like noise, you don't like light. Use one of them and just wherever you are, just put it on. People will go, oh, she's sleeping. Better go away, you know? <laughs> so use survival kits because it makes you feel well. And this was a lifesaver at one stage because I've got a very noisy household, as you can imagine, with three boys. They come back all hours of the day, so that was handy. Okay, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you.